Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. As you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title and if you've read any of it in the description. Today's review and tutorial is uh, the Essence Hello Berlin palette. So, if you want to find out exactly how well, or otherwise, this palette performs, and what I chunter on about this time, you have the best seat in the house. As Sammy the Sloth Straw agrees, grab a drink, grab a snack. Ooh. Put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back. Okay, I would have shown you this in the intro. Let's try you out a little bit. This is the Essence Hello Berlin palette. Nice little bit of silver on the front. Now, when I picked this up, I was thinking it could potentially dupe the Give Me Glow Vintage Rose palette. I'll try and remember to put a picture up here somewhere. But then when it arrived, it does have a mirror. When it arrived, the um, these shades here that I thought were going to be more pink are actually more brown toned. Um, it does have the green, it does have the gold. Sorry, greens here, the gold. Um, and I suppose these two combined could make the brown that's in that, but there are no pinks in it as such, unless you count these two shimmers that have got a bit of a pinky tone to them. Well, that one has anyway. This one's slightly more of an orange or a, a goldy tone to it. So, I was originally going to potentially use it as a dupe for the Gimme Glow. But obviously, that's not the case. So instead, I'm just going to enjoy doing a nice little look for you. Uh, it's... Sunday morning. Now normally hubby has Sundays off but someone else was off and he had to cover them being a forklift driver. Come see, come saw Rodney, these are the way things go. Um, but one, one benefit of that he does get a three day weekend next weekend so that's quite nice. Right, this is still a teaching channel. By virtue of that uh, people with chronic pain, like me, and beginners will be able to keep up with my tutorials. If that means it's too slow for you, what's the speed widget? Feel free to use it. Um, one of the things that I do like to include in all my tutorials is a little clip describing the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes because the way the eyeshadow wears on them through the day is very similar but the actual application of eyeshadow to get the best look possible is actually very different. If you've never seen one of my tutorials before I zoom right up close. You literally just see my eyes on screen so even if you just watch me on a phone you're going to be able to see what's going on so i'm going to insert a clip in just a second or two or three which talks you through how to work out which eye type you have 
and the workaround for each eye type. Once that clip is done, I will be back to apply some of these to these. Use your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over mm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies and I am back. Okay, this is potentially going to be 
a lot softer a look than you would normally see from me. So I'm going to start off with this tapered blending brush. It is clean, it's just stained. Now I don't believe these have names. No they don't. Okay, so I should have done this before I zoomed in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm probably going to start off with this one and this one. I might use this one to blend that out slightly, I haven't decided yet. Or I may go in with this one to deepen this up. Either way, it's going to be mainly green based, I hope. Um, I think actually I might start with the deeper of the two greens. There's a fair amount of kick up in the pan. It's not an issue, just tap off, leave it in there and then just pick it up as you're building the colour up or when it's time to do the other eye. Now, hold the brush at the very end to put as little pressure on your eyelids as possible and then we're going to start with the Viennese Waltz of Blending. That's natural turns towards the nose, flicker when we get there and reverse turns to come back out again. The reason I do this, I'm 46 years old, I've lost 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves, but I know teenagers that have got quite flexible lids. Um, it can just be genetics. And by doing the windscreen wiper move, rather than the Viennese waltz, you can end up with like tiger striping or pinstriping. It'll probably be demonstrated better with this side because I've got these super deep creases just here caused from when my eye was pulled around when I was five years old that sometimes even the Viennese walks can't deal with. So, start from the outside because if we do deposit too much pigment it's much easier to blend it out when your nose isn't in the way. And I'm going to start just above the outside edge of my natural crease. and slowly bring that across. I do quite like the Essence eyeshadow palettes. They can, uh, when they get it right, they get it very right, but unfortunately when they get it wrong, they also get it very, very wrong. Um, I have had a couple of this star before. Um, and they were absolutely fine. So I'm hoping this will be as well. This pigment's blending quite nicely and building up quite smoothly. That's good to see. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. Well, if it hasn't, I hope tomorrow's is better. And if you're at the start of your day, watching me in the shower like Christopher does, or while you're doing your own makeup like Laura does, good morning, hello. I hope you have an absolutely fabulous day. Right, this is actually starting, as I'm building it up, it is starting to look bit patchy but that could be the brush so I'm going to clean this brush off and I'm going to grab a smaller blending brush just see if that will control the colour a bit better this is something that a lot of people don't realise they go oh it's going on patchy it's a crap palette not necessarily, it could just be that it doesn't get on with your eyeshadow base. Thankfully, something I don't normally get now. I've been using the Crown Pebble 
or it could be that you need to use either a different technique to apply it or a different brush. Yeah, that's actually applying better with a smaller brush. It's still not fantastic, but better. Still got that patch there that doesn't seem to want to go anywhere. Well, I do struggle sometimes here and here on the outside. Well, I have super dry patches that sort of tend to cling to pigment like that. But not normally that far over. Hmm. Let's try building up the outer edge a little bit more. This is something you'll always see with me. If it's... If I have any issues with a palette, you will see them. I will leave them in. Now admittedly, greens are some of the most difficult colours to create, however, other brands have managed it for much lower cost price, so, hmm. Let's see how it goes on on the other eye just using this more densely packed brush. See if we get any better results by using this straight away rather than going in with a larger brush first. Yeah, see that does appear to be Getting a better result if you compare the two. It does definitely seem to prefer a smaller brush. I'm just going to grab that larger brush again just to go over this and really sort of blow the edges out because that's not very easy to do when you've got a smaller brush if you really want the edges blown out to match I always relax my brows and check that they look the same both sides because with my fibre I can get quite swollen eyelids um, and with hay fever also I can get that um, so sometimes plus your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're Jimmy Chuck and Photoshop them so it can be a case that you have to do slightly different shapes both sides in order that when you've got your eyes open and your brows relaxed they look the same. Okay. Admittedly, I'm not overly impressed with that. Uh, let's continue with this smaller brush. I'm going to go into the lighter green, more olivey, khaki type of green. And I'm going to see if I can blend this edge out. Now, if you're blending two colours together, always start with your brush half on the colour you want to blend with and half on your eye. That hasn't got any pigment on it yet. Because that will give you a much, much smoother blend. And you're less likely to get a line of delineation where one colour finishes and the next one stops. It's much more likely to just blend seamlessly from one colour to the next. Yeah, see that green seems to be blending much nicer. 
but again I've gone in with the smaller brush so it could be that this particular palette the greens need a smaller brush in order to perform to their best I would absolutely not use this on a wet base though um, I get the feeling you would have real problems of it clinging and not blending out but I think I've rescued that eye okay Let's see if I can repeat the magic the other side so yeah normally on a Sunday Sunday is our sort of do stuff around the house day so we'd be you know, deep cleaning the bathroom, deep cleaning the kitchen. St I mean, stuff gets wiped down every day, but the deep clean is on Sunday. Um, you know, Chris would normally be out there mowing the lawn and pruning any trees and bushes that need trimming back and titting about probably in his shed. In fact, it's currently nine o'clock he probably wouldn't even be up yet uh, I usually let him sleep in on a on a Sunday because he works bloody hard during the week loving so I normally get up and you know start pottering around down here usually usually start editing on a Sunday okay that's not too bad that's not too bad at all. I'm just going to grab the larger brush again and just with nothing on it, just really gently buff the edge of that. Just to soften it a fraction more. And you can see this side has definitely blended better than this one. This is a lot more patchy. I may have to... I think what I might do is go over it with a deeper colour and see if I can deal with that. Right, I'm going to go into the dark brown here on the end of the top row with the little brush. Again, a lot of kick up. And this time I'm going to come right down into the crease and come right the way across. This is the point where if you've moved your crease you need to follow wherever you've moved your crease to. Always put the darkest colour through your crease or your fake crease because dark colours go back and light colours come forward so it tricks the eye into thinking that bit of the eye is further away if you feel you need more control come further up the brush but don't put too much pressure on don't increase the pressure that you're applying the makeup with just because you're closer to the head of the brush. Yeah, that's actually, I think that's rescuing the look quite nicely. Pop a bit of this brown on the outer edge here. Have the mobile lid. actually quite pleased. I think I've finally found something I can actually use in my waterline that doesn't 
make my eyes stream like Niagara. The um, BH Cosmetics Power Pencil. I've got their white one, which I chucked on because it was on special offer on Beauty Bay and it took my order up to getting free next day delivery. Alright, oh, right, I'll do that. Because by the time I'd have paid delivery on it, would have been the amount that I paid for that anyway, so I'm like, oh, I might as well. So, um, I tried it a couple of times and surprisingly it actually worked really well. So I bought the teal one to try. I did buy silver as well, but that arrived and there was absolutely nothing in it. The whole, just an empty pencil, there was no silver in it at all. Right, can you see what I mean there about that faint tiger striping? Now, when it's time to put the shimmer on, I do have to very gently stretch that lid out because otherwise um, I end up with it packing loosely into the crease and then throughout the day rather than being blended on throughout the day it ends up sort of flaking down into my eye and down my face and it's very very painful. Right. My cucumber spray, Not very little left of it, but there we go. Um, to wet my brush with once I've applied the pigment because you never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. Um, I think I'll start off by going into the slightly pink toned one. And when I say slightly, I mean slightly. Okay, this has got a hell of a lot of kick up on it. Can you see that? So you are absolutely going to need to wet the brush. Um, I usually do just because it, it helps shimmers go on with less fallout. But now the ferrule here is damp. So I'm going to tuck that into my knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening the glue that's holding those bristles. Because then you won't have a brush, you'll have a stick. This is um, a lip brush, I think, but it's it's flat and tiny. So I'm going to use this to go right into that inner corner. And pull this out. A third of the way along the eye, roughly. Just past a third, so we've got some blending room. I don't do cut creases the first time I use a palette because I like to see how much opacity the shimmers have, whether they will actually cover the matte shade that's there. Um, Because sometimes you'll get a, a shimmer shade which is literally just, it's a topper shade, it's designed to be worn over something else. In which case, um, you know, if it doesn't have a lot of base pigment to it, then you would need to either cut the crease or put a, a different colour underneath it. Right. So, to do as little extra damage to this eye as possible, the width of the creasing is about the width of my nail, so I go the same width again, then put my finger on the lid and gently stretch it out just far enough that it stretches out the crease. I'm not pulling it out to my ear hole, I'm just blending that onto the lid and then gently letting go okay 
and then just continuing along the lid as I did with the other eye. You can see this eye moves an awful lot more because it did get pulled around as I said when I was a kid so that shows you how much damage can be done. Right I'm going to go into Right, there's two shimmers left. There's this one which is a slightly pink tone and this one which is a slightly golden tone. Now the pink one is very similar in tone to the colour I've already put down. As you can see it's those... That's the one I've just used, that's the one that I just swatched. So I'm going to go into this one which is the more gold toned one ok the gold one is the kind that it starts to get a hard pan the minute you put your brush in it as you can see just there but you can still pick pigment up on the hard pan area so this has obviously got slightly more oils in its makeup than the other one has. And now I'm going to use this on sort of the middle third of the eye. Bring that out. towards the outer corner and then lightly drag the two shimmers together just there using the tip of the bristles and then clean the brush off and just using the tip of the bristles again gently buff it in where The mat is. And then of course we're going to do exactly the same on the other eye. So again I'm just going to go over the bit that has gone hard pan. And as you can see it has let me pick up more pigment. And as you can see I did only go over side that had hard pan. Okay. And then we'll apply this exactly the same way to this side. Apart from that trouble I had initially with that deeper green, which basically was fixed by just using a different brush, I've got no complaints so far with this palette. It seems to be going quite well. Right my lovelies, I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation and bits and bobs on and I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now I've got to wait for the next time I press record to talk to you but for you sweetie it's going to be completely instant uh, so I'll see you right now. Hey my lovelies, I am back. As you can see I've got green brows. Um, I've been using this pink honey. Uh, they call it honey glue. And this is strawberry sherbet. And you can see it's it's got like a little hole in the in the middle of it like that. That you stick. Careful. 
your spoolie into and then run through your brows. Now they recommend that you wet your spoolie. I don't do that, I use my spoolie dry. <coughs> Telling me to take tablets if I haven't already, which I have already. Um, I put my spoolie in here dry and brush through the brows so they're a little bit sticky. Then when I go in with this end with the eyeshadow powder, in this case I used the green that decided to give me so much trouble to start with. Um, the powder has something to stick to and it also sets the brow shape kind of thing. So, double whammy. And I like to have my brows to match my look. Which is actually turning out quite nice. Right. Uh, I did brown here, didn't I? Right, so I'm going to dip into the brown using my flat topped brush and just run that along the lower lash line. I don't know if the teal would work with this look. I might give it a go. As in the pencil, because the, the bright white would be too bright with this. See if the silver one had actually got a silver bit in the middle of it, probably would have done that. But it arrived completely empty, darling. Bizarre, like they'd forgotten to put the lead in the pencil. <laughs> I got no idea what on earth that accent was. I am so sorry. Okay, going in with my brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, flat topped and chunky, um, but you can use any smudger brush, dense blending brush, whatever you want. And I'm going to go into the lighter of the two greens. I'm going to use that just to smudge out the lower lash line a little bit. give it a really nice smoky look. I have actually got a brown eyeliner. I could do a wing with this. I may come back with a wing. Then again I may not. Only time will tell my darlings. Who says you can't wear green eyes? I should have a green eyes. I blooming well do. Right, I'm going into my Laura Geller Charming pink baked gelato swirl illuminator, which looks a little bit like that, and a lip brush that I bought off of eBay well over a decade ago. But it's great for getting just up under the tail of the brow. in the corner and I like to bring it along under my tear duct and just blend it in with the colours under the eyes so if I'm not putting anything in my waterline which to be honest is 99% of the time um, I think this just finishes the eye look off nicely and suits my eye shape okay lovelies I'm going to pause you for one last time while I chuck some more of this highlight on my face, put some mascara on, try this teal pencil in my waterline and decide whether or not I'm going to do a wing, 
put some lippy on, do something with my hair and I'll be back with my finished look and first impressions of the Hello Berlin palette. Once again my darlings, it'll be instant for you after this wibbly bit. I am back my lovelies and as you can see I did a win. Um, I used the Renaissance Revolution Renaissance Flick. The original black is in a gold cover. They also do a brown and a blue now. Um, I really like the Renaissance Flick liners so I got both the colours as soon as I realised they had more colours available. As you can see I've put the teal in my waterline, let's keep our fingers crossed, and the lippy magnetic beautiful casing, black magic written on it, it's the Uoma brand in the shade Allure but I have to show you look at how stunning this lipstick is look can you see that on the outside my camera picking that up I hope so you can see it's not in the lipstick itself it's just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous um, and I love magnetic closures on lipsticks I, I, I fidget with them which is probably not good um, so there we go this is my initial look with the Hello Berlin palette what do I think I'm really disappointed that the pictures online made this end look pinker than it is because I was really hoping this was going to be a cost-effective drugstore dupe for the Vintage Rose palette. Sadly it's not, I'm going to have to keep looking for that or maybe do a dupe of um, colours that I've already got in my collection. Uh, I seem to be doing quite a bit of that. I duped the Muerte palette. I'm just in the process of duping the Royal Beauty Christie colourful side of her palette that she did with Pure. So. Hayley, my 24 hour clock buddy, you've got me started on duping palettes now. Which is probably saving me a lot of money, so thank you. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm really disappointed that the pictures online weren't accurate of the shades in this palette. That being said, I've used one, two, three of the mattes and two of the shimmers. Um, I used the two most difficult colours to create, which were the greens. We saw that when I initially used a loosely packed blending brush, that deep green was super patchy, not, not behaving well. But as soon as I went to a more densely packed brush, it went on absolutely fine, blended out no problem at all. So. Um, I would absolutely advise smaller, denser brushes with this. Maybe just keeping a, um, you know, a fluffier brush just to, to help buff the edges out with. Um, the shimmers, they're okay. I mean, they're, they're not, you know, they're not they're not going to blind you with their brilliance. Put it that way. Uh, but they're shiny. They're shimmery. There wasn't a huge amount of fallout. The one that got hard pan, you could still pick pigment up from the hard pan, so that was good. Um, this shade up here, this sort of cream bone coloured setting shade for anybody my sort of skin tone or maybe slightly deeper. To be honest, I'd rather that wasn't there and that they had like a green shimmer there or something. Um, if you want to set your eyeshadow base, you can use your setting powder for that. 
um, and the eyeshadow base that I use, the Chrome Pebble, doesn't need setting anyway. So that for me is a little bit of a waste in the palette. Overall, am I glad I bought it? I'm on the fence. I've got greens like that elsewhere. The reason I picked this up is because I thought it had pinks in it that I didn't have in other palettes and I thought, that the, as I said, it was going to be duping the Vintage Rose palette. So I can't make up my mind whether I'm not jumping over fences for it because it's not the dupe that I wanted it to be or whether it's just because if I'd seen this as an accurate representation of the colour story, I wouldn't have picked this up. Because the majority of looks that I do from this are going to be this. They're going to be using the greens with the deep brown to darken through the crease or maybe the black to darken through the crease. So I'm really only going to get one kind of look out of this. Because you know this this sort of shade is is not one that I'm drawn to it's not one that I use on the regular um, I don't know I'll continue to have a play with it and you know off camera and uh, just see what I think but at the moment probably wouldn't recommend it. I've got those greens in much better versions in other palettes. And if you cover up the greens, it's a pretty pretty bog standard boring to me anyway brown palette. Um which I'm pretty sure most people will have a crap ton of those shades in their collection. Anyway, um, if you're really drawn to that particular colour scheme, then maybe... It performed okay, is probably the nicest thing I can say about it. Damning with faint praise. Anyway, as I said with me, you always get my honest opinion. This lippy, however, I want more because it is stunning um, but the lip is not what we're talking about today if you are one of my 4F babies please double check you are still subscribed YouTube are still unsubscribing you but they are leaving my films in your news feed it's not obvious that you've been unsubscribed once you've done that a bit of a thumbs up and let me know in the comments section does does that colour scheme call to you would you have picked it up if you'd seen now that you've seen my tutorial with it has your opinion on this palette changed from when you first saw it did you want it when I first showed it to you do you still want it now let me know I love having chats with you in my comments section. It may take me a while because of chronic pain, but I do read all my comments. Even the spam ones I read. When I remember to check the spam folder. Right, if you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, normally I'm a lot more positive at the end of my films because normally the palette performs better than, than this particular one did. 
as I said at the start though with Essence they either perform really well or they perform really mediocre and unfortunately this one lands on the mediocre side of things uh, but if you've got this far through I'm guessing there was something about this film that you liked so it would be awesome if you two would like to join the 4F family it's really easy to do you hit that red subscribe button turn it from red to grey then ring my bell, ring my bell, and say yes and all notifications every single time they ask you. Sometimes you only get asked once, other times you get pop-up windows asking you the same damn question 16 different ways. But hopefully then you'll get notified of my films going up. Well you might get told about one in four, that's the average that my hubby seems to be getting at the moment. So there are an awful lot of other films of mine you can watch. I've got other tutorials, other reviews, I've got collabs, I've got challenges, I've got tags. There's my Zodiac series, my Photo Inspiration series. Um, I even read you my favourite poem. So there's going to be something on here that you're going to enjoy, I hope. So if you're looking for some me time, basically grab a drink, grab a snack. Put your feet up, pick a playlist and get comfy. Uh, but if you pick the relaxed playlist, there's a good chance you'll be asleep before the end of the second film. But then that is the uh, the whole meaning behind those films in that playlist. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.